So guys, this camera or this phone never ceases to amaze me. Um, I just downloaded this the other day. This is a dual mode uh, camera solution for the S7, S8. I don't know if the other galaxies have it, but it's cool. The limitation is it only shoots in 1080, but I can front face talk to you guys and show you guys something in, from the back camera. The downside is, is it seems like the autofocus on the back is pretty compromised with this, at least with that. Like if I'm looking at normal stuff like outside, if it has like a lot of light, it seems to work really well. What I was hoping to do with this is eventually like when I can go to like bars and play uh, pinball games or something like that, or like the pinball museum, to have my tripod set it up and have this, uh, you know, like showing the play field, maybe like in a long view as opposed to uh, 16 by 9 and then have me up on the top and then I could do like gameplay recordings like that put them up on uh, YouTube and vid me I thought that would be pretty cool but um, I don't know I'll experiment with it okay I just wanted to show you guys what's going on with the living room um, I've been talking about it on stream a lot so this is the new couch it's just a small little couch doesn't take a lot of room uh, this I would think on camera that this house looks bigger than it actually is, but it's it's really not. And I need something for this wall here. All I have is this like little other extra seating area. But um, yeah, this looks this is really nice. So this is actually all one piece. I just have this blanket on here because the cat likes it. And uh, yeah, you can just put your feet up, kind of sit there, do whatever. Um, I like to watch YouTube a lot on this TV. I have a little. Roku right here that I use quite a bit. I've been using this guy, the Steam Link, and it's been working fine. And it's over wireless too. I don't even have a network in here. So uh, this right now is just basically a case with uh, fans and a 1200 watt power supply because I've gotten everything. I'm going to sell it on eBay or wherever I can and get some money out of it. Got a lot of cable management here. Got everything kind of strung up in a way that so when you're sitting on the couch, you don't see wires. And then you get these cool little cubby holds for things like controllers, for instance. And one of my favorite things is, and here's outside. Uh, sorry for the shakiness today. It's just, you know, nature of the beast. If I hit the controller, it syncs up and give it a second and the steam link just takes over so we're just going to focus on that so as you can see here the controller that's about what you expect in delay right there i don't know if you guys can really see that but and this is on wireless i'm using a um what is it? A Netgear Nighthawk router for the wireless in the house. And so that's beaming to the stream li Steam Link wirelessly. And here, this actually has a latency test, so we'll try that. And as you can see here, that's the latency test right there. It's uh, 4.73 milliseconds with a variance of 1.72. So that means it's swinging one way or the other. Um, I'll try that again just for the sake of testing. Okay, so 5.13 with 1.87. So it's honestly not that bad. It's not as bad as people think. Now, one thing I will tell you is when you're using one of these in wireless mode, you have over here in the streaming settings, just set it to balanced. Don't worry about beautiful or fast or anything like that. You're gonna get a good output on balanced. Like if you're far away enough from your 1080, like I am, you're really not gonna see the uh, blockiness or like little pixelization that video tends to do. It still comes in pretty clear. Okay, so that was just a little bit icing on the cake. I've been talking about that living room and how it's been set up for the past uh, couple weeks now on stream. And I just thought it'd be cool to kind of visually show you guys how it is. All right, so first thing I want to address is everybody says you shouldn't be excited for this because the Coleco Chameleon. You know what? Mike Kennedy is a dick and he deserved what he got, backlash choice. That doesn't mean everybody else should suffer for his sins because they're trying to create something 
uh, legitimately cool. I saw this with what was called, uh, is now Polymega. It's the system that has like the cartridge slot. You can like change it out. That is an actual real thing. They've actually partnered up with somebody that had a prototype for a while. That is a real thing. But I keep on hearing people and dicks say, oh, don't support them because remember the Clego Chameleon. That is a whole nother person. This, these guys didn't ask for that crap. They're trying to do something cool. And I think you have to trade Atari right now the same way. A lot of people are like, oh, this feels the same way because it's being kickstarted. Let me put two things out there. Atari may seem big to you because you know them as like a big space or used to be a big space in the video games space back in the day. What games have they published lately? Like what makes you think that they're even at the level of like Sega, Nintendo, anything like that? So you know what, if they need to kickstart or fun, get a crowdfunding for something, as small as they are now, I'm actually okay with it because there's been other people and other companies that are just as small as Atari, even larger companies that have crowdfunded things. And the fact that they're using Kickstarter means they have to have a working prototype in place. If they have a working prototype and they show their concepts before they actually ask for money on Kickstarter and they show people what this thing is, I'm 100% okay with that. Now let's get onto the speculation. So they showed the system. It looked like, actually we'll put it up here. It looked like this. And it had wood grain on the front, which they had two versions they showed. They had a, a black and red and a, and a wood grain one. I actually like the black and red better. I hear, I heard somewhere that the black and red supposed to have a glass front on it as opposed to the wood grain one. But, you know. It's whatever you like. It, it For me, I actually like the Darth Vader uh, 2600 better. And this does look like it's, you know, it's very much influenced by an Atari 2600. So, it, but it's very sleek looking. I will say it is actually pretty sexy. So on the back, they have four USB ports, RJ45 and an SD card slot. This is where people are getting, I think, a little bit confused. They see the SD card slot, they assume this is an Android console. They said PC. Now, when somebody says PC parts, I'm going to assume x86, and everybody's like, no, 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 it's got to be Android, they just don't know what they're talking about. The guys, they've been working on it for three years, I'm pretty sure they know what it is. If they're saying it's based off of PC parts, it's got to be x86, most likely AMD, APU base, uh, most likely the APU that everybody thought Atari's system was going to be, and it's not that, so... I don't think it's going to be a super powerful APU, um, something like the Merlin, it's going to have like 8 CUs on it, a quad core processor, nowhere near what you would see like on a PS4 or Xbox at all. Um, but it will be able to play smaller games and I really hope that's where they're going with this. So I'm not saying like any of this is written in stone, I don't know anything underground, I'm just like speculating like everybody else and what I hope this is. So Atari smart. Now one of the reasons I'm on a PC, I do enjoy AAA games. I don't enjoy them as much as I enjoy indie games. I just think indie games and indie devs are taking bigger risks. They're introducing new gameplay mechanics and stuff we didn't have before. And just indie games tend to be more interesting to me. The graphics to me, I know like a lot of people think graphics is king. Graphics is not king to me. If gameplay is king. The game has to be fun. I don't, like, at the end of the day, I don't care really what the game looks like as long as it's fun. It could be the most simplistic thing, and I'll still play it if it's fun. Now, I don't want this to be an Android-based system, because I don't think Android has a lot of good games that translate over to a controller. You have a lot of games that are really meant to be on a touchscreen, and then the controller is a secondary thought. So I'm really hoping they went PC with this. Another reason being is most indie devs out there um, that make really good games like Axiom Verge, Shovel Knight, stuff like that, uh, do have a Linux version that runs in Linux already, so if they had this running on Linux it wouldn't be that hard. The other reason being is these games t typically don't take up a lot of memory, so you wouldn't need a whole lot of memory on a console, and then you could actually you know, get away with like 128 uh, gig SD card and put a lot of games on there that you wouldn't normally be able to put on. Uh, like an SSD if you've got like games that are going 50 gigs a pop. So I don't think this is going to be playing anything like Shadows of Mordor or anything like that. I'd be absolutely shocked, but if they're going to go over over and try to get the indie games over, and I think their whole thing's going to be like, remember the days of old when games were just fun and uh, simple and whatnot? 
I think I may try something like that to market people that are maybe kind of like, you know, just feeling a little bit like AAA is becoming more the same. I'm not saying that there's nobody innovating on AAA, but it's certainly far, far less than the indie developers. And they can probably get indie developers on board this if it's running on an OS that they already have their games running on, which a lot of them do have Linux going to. Uh, a lot of them it's not hard for them to port to Linux. And if they make the store in a way where instead of like doing a licensing fee, they're just taking a cut from the game, like say like 5% or something like that. And the indie devs don't have to keep on going back to them, like get their games certified and all that. Like just have the indie devs certify it. And then all the Atari has to do is like say if a game's like truly, truly broke, then they reserve the option to pull it from the store until it's fixed or something like that. And they also reserve the option of like actually selecting like what is allowed in the store because you don't want to run into a situation like Steam right now where there's just like a lot of crap games on there. It's me being somebody that's been gaming for a long time, I know what I like and I know what looks good and so it's not a big issue to me, but you do have to factor in if you're going to be a console, there's a lot of people that just don't keep up with that. So you have to, you have to critique your store and your inventory of what's going to be there. Now, the other thing I heard is the fact that this might not be, you know, for it'll have like old classic games on it apparently. They said that's one of the things they're proud of is it has enough power to run pretty much any older game that they need to, so emulation. I'd be curious if they just give you the emulators and tell you to get the ROMs or if they're going to try to like resell them, like if they're going to go to like SNK and be like, hey, get your Neo Geo games on here, that'd be great. It's like, hmm. That'd be kind of interesting, almost like they have their own virtual console. And the way virtual console is right now, they could actually easily do it better than Nintendo. So if that's something that appeals to a lot of people, this may become a way for people that got into retro collecting, not really for the collecting sake of it, because I talked to a lot of people to get into it. And they get into it because they want to play the games. They, but they absolutely hate the cost of the games. And if Atari brings something out that just doesn't focus on their older games, but other systems like Turbo Graphics, uh, Sega Genesis, stuff that was on the Nintendo, it may not necessarily be Nintendo games or something like that. If they focus on that for like their classic selections, um, I think they got a real hit out of the park. They just have to keep on getting somebody out there to, to pick these older games up, to pick up these indie developers. I think it could actually be a really cool box. And I don't think a lot of these YouTubers out there telling you that you shouldn't be excited is really the wrong message. You should be cautious. But being excited is okay. I'm excited. I want to see what this thing is. I'm curious what this thing is. I'm not on board to buy it or kickstart it right now, but I definitely want to see what Atari is doing because I am my interest is definitely peaked. And some of the things that they said has me speculating towards the end that it might be like a an indie box slash classic game box or something like that. So anyways, Atari, hit this thing out of the park. Do it right, okay? Don't make sure you get your message out there too. Make sure you get somebody in front of the camera, get the message out there because just trying to do like a couple of quick flashes or something like that, it's not good advertisement. You need to, you need to try harder than anybody else. Even though it used to be Atari at one time, uh, you got a lot to prove and you got one chance. So don't screw it up, okay? So guys, that's my thought on the Atari box. Um, let me know what you know think about the Atari box in the comments down below and. I'm going to start trying to do more stuff like this with just like sharing thoughts and things that help kind of like promote my stream because I've just come to the realization that uh, time management wise I don't have enough time for everything in the world and I don't have enough time to edit all these videos and stuff so my focus is going to be on Twitch mostly and there's still going to be stuff up on Vidme, there's still going to be stuff up on YouTube. But the timing is not going to be like, hey, I'm going to have this many videos a week or something like that. So please don't expect that. I'm just trying to have fun and I hope you guys can come have fun with me. And uh, yeah, so if you're on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, follow on Vidme, and be like Gary Busey and hit ring that bell if you want a notification when something goes live. All right, so I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.